they didn't go to jail for these. Hi, what group are you with and what is going on here today? Um, so I'm with the OBAs, one very angry squad, um, previously known as Ovarian Cycles. And, um, and we are here to support ABCS um, and the efforts to support all political prisoners. Can you tell me about your group and the community work you're doing and where? Sure, so uh, the OBAs uh, was founded in 2010 um, in the city of Boyle Heights. Um, specifically to give space for the non-academic um, uh, uh, brown women that uh, that still currently at risk that come from like punk rock backgrounds that really like didn't really find a place now you know as we're getting older etc um, and um, and so we utilize the bicycle to to bring us together and to um, really kind of um, address the issues that are happening in our community but while also uh, writing to the different resources that are available in our community so um, rather than seeing like a lack in our community we were coming from like a more a much more like um, you know our community has so much wealth of resource it's just a matter of tapping into it like in a very DIY type of type of way uh, we've been watching on the news you guys have been national in the news about this whole gen gentrification. gentrification what is gentrification yeah, so we are very proud members of the coalition Defend Boyle Heights. And so we are specifically, with that coalition, we focus on gentrification. And so what gentrification is, is it, it is a violent uh, displacement of the most marginalized people. And so uh, this includes undocumented folks, this includes like poor folks, right? Um, uh, those folks living already on the margins. And so what, and we believe it is an extension of colonization, right? And so. And so, yeah, and so the work that we do is uh, specifically coming together, right, like different different collectives. So we have like, you know, some folks that are coming in from the nonprofit industrial complex, right? But but understand uh, understanding that the limitations, right, of that, of that type of organizing. And then we have uh, other folks with like, you know, different political views, right, coming together as well. And then organizing with the, with the mothers, right? With the mothers that have the, like the most to lose in that area, um, that have been holding it down in, the, in, in, in that area, right? And so, but you know, coming together and understanding that like th these different efforts um, uh, are necessary and that we can work together towards ending um, gentrification or at the very least making hipsters scared and think twice about moving into Boyle Heights and so we're very proud of that because a lot of our tactics or a lot of our tactics are direct action and um, and very uh, and very uh, uh, productive in that way uh, people from other community they're facing like eviction or uh, it's not rent control like that or what could they do if they have problems like that uh, well I would um in other cities, well, it just really kind of depends. Like, we're really lucky to have um, attorneys on our side as well, right, uh, from LACLA. And, um, and so we're lucky in that sense. So I would imagine it's just a matter of, like, organizing within your, within your uh, neighborhoods, within your community, and seeing what resources already exist and trying to tap into that, right, um, as, a, as a collective, as a coalition. And for folks that maybe are not affected by gentrification but want to help, you know, this is you know this is a great opportunity to be an actual ally, an actual accomplice. If you're a, if you're a lawyer, if you have connections, right, or if you're working in the nonprofits and um, and you want to offer a space for folks so that they can organize, there's uh, there's so many different ways and so many different methods for everybody to plug in and be part of the and, and be part of this struggle. Can you tell us about your space? Sure. So community our space, space, yeah, our community space, our autonomous community space is called La Concha. We're located at 2628 East Cesar Chavez Avenue, Cross Street is Mott. And um, our community space is not funded by, the, by any federal or state monies, and we're really proud of that. We sustain ourselves with the prints that we sell online, and then um, and we utilize the space for like various, uh, you know, to, to develop uh, programs and um, and events, but I think more than anything, it's like an experiment, right? It's an experiment where, you know, like, where our main focus is like, how do we incite, how do we continue to incite rebellion, you know, uh, in the youth and in the grandmothers and all throughout the ages, right? Because it's important to do so.
Um, you, you also been involved with the punk scene for a long time. Yeah. Like during Luna Soul Cafe and sub Subsistential Days, like yeah. they always had like bands and speakers, and it was really radical. Yeah. But what's I mean, I'm, I have I've been out of touch with LA for four years. Why is it so different now? Like I see drugs now. <laughs> <laughs> People fighting. It's just I mean, the truth is, the different. drugs have always been around, uh -huh. right? But I think that I think that you bring a, a, it's it's a good point in that you know there is something different, and I think that what's different, what we have to understand is that Luna Soul didn't just fall out of the sky, right? There were elders, or there were like you know people that took on that responsibility to have that space open to to the youth, right, and to really welcome them, right, and to really have them like you know feel like that space is is theirs right and and to take ownership in that way right and i think that as we're getting older like those of us that have like really benefited from those spaces like you know and these punk shows right um and 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 having even like um um you know uh what is it like books right like available or any kind of literature or zines right available at these punk shows those of us who benefited from that i think that now as we're getting older we have the obligation and the responsibility to now be those people that we were once you know uh, affected by or influenced by right and unless we're we're not we're not doing that then like we can't really be talking shit about the youth like it's our fault that you know that that's not you know like a like a present uh yeah, or or that you know how however we experience punk isn't being experienced by the next generation that's our fault like what are we doing so that we ensure that we are passing the torch on to the next generation of youth right mm -hmm. that's on us that's on us also for people who never heard of luna soul cafe you want to talk about it okay what, yes what so luna soul cafe was a was a cooperative uh based in macarthur park area and it was a really beautiful space it was a workers co uh, cooperative but it was really beautiful because it really, uh, it, it allowed for many different uh, collectives to flourish from out of there and for uh, folks, is, um, for people's theories to develop and for people's organizing skills to, to get sharp and get on point. And so these are the type of spaces that we need and we have an obligation now that we're getting older to make sure that the youth have these types of spaces, you know, to come to, right? Um, in today's times, right? <laughs> so what are you doing? Punk the fuck up. Okay. Thank you for the interview. You're welcome. And if people want to get in contact with you, what, how can they reach you? Okay, so uh, either um, by email, I would imagine, uh, ovariancycles at gmail.com or, or, yeah, ovariancycles at gmail.com. That's it. All right, thanks. Thank you.